Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. We're looking at this book, God's Philosophers by James Hannum. And uh, it's the last reading that we're doing. Some historians of science have had a habit of lauding individuals. Oh, sorry. Another common mistake is to divide up history into discrete periods and then give them names containing clear value judgment. This can be extremely misleading. For example, we are commonly taught that there was a renaissance which was a good thing, the dark ages which were bad and the enlightenment which was very good indeed. How could anyone disprove of being enlightened when the alternative presumably was to be benighted? Renaissance means rebirth with the clear implication that previously civilization had been well and truly dead. The term dark ages was coined in the 4th century by the Italian writer Francisco Petrarch, um, Petrarch, uh, 1304-74. What he meant was that between the ancient world of Rome and his own time nothing much happened. For 1,000 years mankind had stood still as we shall see. The advance of science provides one of the best examples of the injustice of these historical labels. The first appearance of the term medieval ages, a less pejorative label, was in the 15th century when it was used by various Italian humanists. One might think that other names we give, we give to historical periods also date back, date back centuries, but in fact they, they nearly all originated in the 19th century France. French historians had a very clear idea that the past was the story of mankind's progress towards their own civilization, which they regarded as the pinnacle of human progress. The English were just a bad. The Victorians invented a story about the triumph of civilization through Protestantism, free markets and benevolent British Empire. They even believed that this triumph had been made possible by frequent victories over the French. If we really are going to understand history, we will have to do away with the prejudicial labels like the Dark Ages and the Enlightenment, or at least learn to treat them with considerable scepticism. So what I like about this book is it, I'm hoping to do a PhD and some of my ideas that I have about the quest for the historical Jesus. Actually, I'm really glad about this book because it actually, this book is really helping me to clarify my own PhD thesis. And basically, my thesis, part of my thesis is looking at the history of Jesus studies, the quest for the historical Jesus studies, and critiquing it and saying that a lot of that quest was to do to philosophical, cultural and political influences on the quest of the historical Jesus studies. And we can see that in the in the way historians over the pa in the past have written about the Dark Ages. So you have French historians who who were doing their who were rationalist and who were doing their encyclopedias and and wanted to cut the knot between church and state had a vested interest in demonising the Middle Ages. Protestant theologians at the turn of the Reformation had a vested interest in demonising the Middle Ages. What I'm saying is we've got to go back to the historical source material and find that when we actually look at these things, that it's not the case, that the medieval times produced a lot of good things, and one of those things is it helped the foundation of modern science. The, ref the relevance of this in terms of religion and science today is people like Aaron Ra and these atheists uh, like uh, Richard Dawkins will constantly try to demonize Christians and say that Christianity is anti-intellectual, that um, it's not based in reason. But actually, when you look at the history of science, you go back to the Middle, a Middle Ages and there's actually, if we cut across all the cliché and all the prejudice against the Middle Ages, there's actually a lot in the Middle Ages that laid the foundation. I'm not saying all, because obviously classical Greek thought, Islamic thought, played an influence as well, but there was a lot in the medieval philosophers and thinkers of that time produced a bedrock, a foundation for modern science. So don't listen to these uh, modern atheists that go on about uh, science and religion and there's a disparity there. Uh, actually, look into it. It's more. It's more. There's more to it. it there's more it, bigger issues than actual. The atheists would actually um, would want you to know, really. Okay, don't go for the cliches. 
And that's why I've had to make this series. I had 2,000 of these kind of scholarly videos that critiqued atheism in a scholarly way. And the atheist harassed me and they phoned me up and uh, threatened me. And I ended up losing over 2,000 of these kind of scholarly videos that you'll, you've just seen now in this series of 10 videos. And they've got a channel up where they put all my silly videos, funny videos. But those 1,500 uh, videos that they have of me have to be balanced with my scholarly videos. But the atheists have forced them off the internet. So that's why I'm having to make a new batch of scholarly videos to counteract what they've done to me. And these people do not believe in freedom of speech. And they do not believe in freedom of scholarship. And I've given you some really good scholarship to think about the Middle Ages. And uh, I just hope that you think and don't let people shape your mind but do your own thinking. Thank you.